Sassel released interim results, helped by a weaker rand, up 26%. We spoke to the company's chief executive, David Constable, and Google asked him what the drastic change in the numbers would have been had the rand not weakened so sharply against the US dollar. The weaker rand obviously uh, helps Sassel uh, uh, because of our products uh, sold offshore and, and then uh, obviously our financials are all reported back in in rand so the dollar the dollar based and euro based products certainly uh, help us out dramatically as we as we export and sell from our other businesses offshore but at the same time the the weaker rand uh, also uh, affects our costs and uh, I think uh, our CFO quoted today uh, four point nine percent of our uh, cost increases in the first half of FY14 were due to a a week around. So it is a, a balancing act and, and we really try to optimize the impact of, of macroeconomics, obviously the, the RAND, and, uh, and then focus in on, on uh, maximizing what we can control, the volumes, the, the uh, increased margins and cost uh, cost containment, which is a big focus area at Sasso right now. Mm -hmm. You mentioned cost containment, Daniel. Cash flows is also enhanced quite well, up by 50%. Will you be using this perhaps for future acquisitive growth? The uh, the cash generated from from operations was up 50% uh, to 28.1 billion rand. Uh, so uh, we're in a deleveraged position right now on the balance sheet, uh, but uh, we do have uh, growth plans. Uh, obviously coming in the middle half of the decade which we need to fund and we also have a progressive dividend policy which we need to fund so uh, when you balance it all out we are returning cash to our shareholders at, but at the same time we have a great growth story that that they can latch on to as well and with 70 percent of our our shareholders based here in South Africa they they can participate and and uh, reap the benefits of our of our growth aspirations outside the country as well. I want us to explore that dividend story. It's up at a record of eight rand a piece right now. Is that sustainable going forward? Our uh, our dividend policy is a progressive dividend policy, which means we will continue to at least uh, pay the the equivalent of the previous year's dividend or interim dividend uh, of the previous financial year, uh, barring any uh, unforeseen global crises like we had back in 2008. But uh, generally speaking. We, uh, we will uh, track our dividend policy to our earnings growth and, uh, and like I say, underpin it from the previous year. So you will see at least a flat or growing dividend at Sassel going forward. And, and we, uh, in our forecasting, feel comfortable that we can continue that through our, our CapEx uh, period uh, here in the, in the middle to the later half of the decade. I'd like you to walk us through the opportunities presented in the U.S., in particular in Louisiana with the ethane cracker business. How, how what kind of a substantial, substantial biz change can this bring to your business? Uh, it is really the, uh, we've had some game changers, but this is a, right now, if you look at it, our cost containment program and our ethane cracker in the U.S. are the two pillars, if you will, that, that really we need to focus on. And uh, the ethane cracker is, is a 1.55 million ton per year facility, so it's a large world-scale facility with seven derivative uh, units in behind it. So we're, we're taking that low-cost ethane feedstock in the U.S., and, uh, which is obviously what we, what we play at. That's our value proposition is to monetize uh, low-cost feedstocks and uh, turn them into higher-value products. So you take the ethane, crack it into ethylene, and then turn it into high-value derivative products. So we don't have too much merchant ethylene going into the market. It's, it's higher-value products. And, and what goes through these products? Those are like paint products? And yeah, exactly. There's, uh, there's uh, ethylene oxide mono, ethylene glycol, ethoxylates for the deter detergent uh, industry. So yeah, a much higher value uh, coming up the back end of the plant. But with those additional facilities, obviously your capex is higher. Uh, right now we're in the five to seven billion dollar U.S. range for the entire complex, the cracker and the derivative units and uh, driving a strong uh, rate of return as well. So we're confident that the final investment decision will, will take place this calendar year on the cracker and we'll have it uh, basically uh, um, s starting up late calendar year 17, beneficial operation probably early 2018. Now this operation has been met with a lot of skepticism from the market. How do you respond to that? No, I think uh, to, to clarify, I think the market uh, loves the cracker. Uh, because of the, like I said earlier, the low-cost ethane feedstock. Our cr we have a current cracker in Louisiana, which is uh, printing money right now. So really, you can think of it, and we'll be putting this uh, new cracker on the same, same site. So we're really, it's more of an expansion, if you will, 
and we're already in those markets, those derivative uh, plant markets. Uh, we're already making those products now, so we're expanding and taking more uh, more uh, product into the into the same markets we're playing in. Uh, the, what we're doing is leveraging the shale gas revolution in the U.S. and taking advantage of that low-cost feedstock, and and the market can see what it's doing now for Sasol, and this is just more of the same. The project I think you're referencing is the second, the, f the phasing in of the gas to liquids plant, mm -hmm. which is coming later in the decade. Uh, we'll take an FID decision uh, two years, well, 18 months to two years after the FID on the cracker. And there you'll, you've got to uh, really understand the, uh, the arbitrage between the natural gas price and the, uh, the uh, crude oil uh, barrel price, uh, which will be selling uh, uh, low sulfur diesel into and, and a variety of uh, chemical products into the, the marketplace. So that's uh, FID is yet to be uh, you know taken, and uh, and that's where some of the uh, concern is on will that will that big difference between natural gas and crude oil that big arbitrage be there in for the long term? Mm -hmm. And we'll have to take a view on that uh, closer to the time that we uh, see the capex get through the front end engineering and design, see the estimates and. Uh, and take a view on that uh, in a few years time. Mm. I understand in total uh, you might need a capital requirement of 14 billion US dollars? For the GTL it's uh, in the 12 to 14 billion dollar range. Uh, we're looking at some opportunities uh, to reduce the capex by having some of our suppliers actually build some of the units on their, if you will, their side of the fence and take oxygen and, and uh, other industrial gases over the fence or co-generated power from the utility mm -hmm. and that will reduce that capex somewhat qu quite a bit actually so that's w w again we're just starting front end engineering and design and those decisions are yet to be made but those are some of the things we're looking at to keep the the capex down mm -hmm. coming back to shale gas uh, no doubt that has presented an awesome opportunity in the US as well as Canada are you going to be pursuing opportunities in South Africa you know I, I've uh, I've talked about shale gas a lot uh, in uh, in the in South Africa and I'm a big proponent of it uh, we have a shale gas operation in Canada with our partner our new partner Progress Energy who's just uh, uh, bought uh, Talisman's 50% uh, share of our our reserves in Canada so we we have a good experience on shale gas and we believe and we can see that it can be done in an environmentally friendly fashion as well uh, so uh, we want to bring that experience to South Africa and yes we would we would really like to uh, to participate and monetize that that gas in South Africa and create jobs here in in the country and not uh, not LNG it liquefy it and, and send it offshore for others to to monetize elsewhere which does not create a lot of jobs so we really think that uh, gas to liquids uh, GTL plants or gas to chemicals or gas to power plants which of course we are uh, in dire need of, of more power in the country. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, we, uh, we are a proponent of, of shale gas in South Africa. We just have to figure out how to, how to play and get involved and, and, uh, and try to find some reserves that are blocks that we can start exploring on.